expression. If it looks like this, a sub n is some constant times a sub n minus 1 plus some constant times a sub n minus 2 plus some constant times a sub n minus k, where all these constants, the ci, are all just real numbers, and this guy here, the ck, the last one that you see is not a zero. If this last guy, the rest of these can be zero. Really what it's saying is, you know, the oldest one that you have cannot be zero. So these are the ones I'm going to look at. And these are the ones I'm going to try to guess a solution for, check it, and then I'm always going to use that. Um, examples of things like this. F sub n is equal to F sub n minus 1 plus F sub n minus 2. Does that meet that definition? What are the coefficients that are in front of those two functions, the F of n minus 1 and F of n minus 2? They're both 1s. How about a sub n is equal to 3, a sub n minus 2, plus a 7, a sub n minus 5. Does it meet that? Yep. So that's good. That's good. What if I said a sub n was equal to an a sub n minus 1 times an a sub n minus 2? Does it meet that? Does it look like what's supposed to happen? The a sub n's are separated by pluses, and they have constants in front of them. And the answer to this would be no. That does not meet that form. What if I said a sub n is equal to an a sub n minus, well, here, 5 fourths of a sub n minus 1 plus 1. Does it meet this form? <coughs> what does every term require? What do I notice on that? Every term needs a constant times an a sub n of some sort. Does every term on the bottom look like that? No, right? This guy is my problem. He doesn't have an a in it. So that would mean, nope, can't do that. So we need to be able to recognize. They have to look like one of these particular forms. So that would mean that the solution I'm going to guess would not be able to solve my coconut problem but it would be able to solve Fibonacci problems or Fibonacci-like problems or variations like this. Now, uh, because we're going to try and solve anything that looks like this, we are going to give this thing its own name. You're going to love this name. I mean, the formula doesn't look that bad, does it? It's just a constant times an a sub n plus a constant times an a sub n. The a sub n's have to go down. And the last guy, whatever the K is, that one definitely doesn't end in a zero. So what we're trying to solve, the name for this guy is, it's linear. Why is it linear? Because the A's are by themselves. They just have the one power. They're not being squared. They're not being cubed. They're not multiplying each other. So they're linear. It's a linear combination. It's a constant times it. So it's linear. It's homogeneous. What's homogenized milk? What's homogeneous stand for? You make all of the things like the other things. What do I notice about every one of these terms? Constant a sub n. They're all alike. So there's homogeneity. And so this is linear, it's a homogeneous, it's a recurrence relation. So it's a linear homogeneous recurrence relation of degree k. What does that mean? It simply says, how far in the past do I need to go? We go far, for example. <laughs> What is the degree of the Fibonacci? How far ago do I need to do? go? Two, so it's a degree two. What's the degree of this guy? How far into the past did he have to go? Five, so he's degree five. So that tells you how far in the past you need to go to be able to generate your next values. Linear homogeneous recurrence relation, it's obviously a recurrence relation of degree K. 
with constant coefficients. So the numbers in front have to be, it's a real number times the A subs. So that's the entire name. We are going to solve linear homogeneous recurrence relations of degree K with constant coefficients. And we are going to solve this by guess and check. So I'll take a simple example. What if I told you that A sub N was equal to A sub N minus one plus A sub N minus two? Well, if I didn't even have like two of those, what if I had that? This would kind of look like, you know, derivatives, right, are a, a function in the past, if we would look at it that way. So this would be look like a function is equal to its derivative. If this was a differential equation where I had the original function is equal to its first variation, these things look like this. The next value is equal to the previous value. What are the only functions that behave this way? Any guesses? What's the solution for this guy? It's exponential, right? The derivative is the exponential. So I'm going to guess that. So I'm going to simply guess, so if this is plus a sub n minus 2, I'm just simply going to guess that my a sub n is equal to something to the, so r is some constant, I don't know it. What I'm guessing is I'm guessing an exponential solution. I'm going to say, does this behave like differential equations? The differential equation would get, say, guess an exponential. So I'm going to just guess an exponential. Something, 2 to the nth, 3 to the nth. Now, this, this isn't that awkward. Why? Let's go back to, do, 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 do. where are we at? Where is it at? This one. If I didn't have the plus 1 here, right? If I didn't do a plus one on it, if I said it was just twice the previous values, what would the sequence have been? One, and then I double it and go to what? Two, and I double it and go to what? Four, and I double it and go to what? What is this? That's two to the n. An exponential solve it. So it's not unreasonable since the exponential solve this one, I bet it's going to solve them all. This thing's kind of crazy, but let's try it. So I'm going to check. A sub n is r to the n, so I just take this, okay, this is a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2. So really, to show that it's a solution, I've got to figure out what my, con if it's going to work, I have to know what the R is. Okay, so um, wherever I see AN, I'm going to plug R in. Remember that this N and this N are not N. This is a function. This is A sub whatever is R to whatever. So what is A sub N? It's R to the N. What's A sub N minus 1? R to the N minus 1. What's a sub n minus 2? r to the n minus 2. Could you solve that for r? Hmm. Let me see. rn is equal to, well, that's an rn divided by r. That's an rn divided by r squared. It's common to, how do I solve rational equations? I multiply everything by the common denominator. What's the common denominator? r squared. If I multiply everything by r squared, what does this entire problem become? That's r squared times r to the n is equal to r times r to the n plus r to the n. Now, r isn't zero, which would be a if, would it make sense for the, an exponential thing to ever have a zero in the base? No. So if Rn isn't zero, I can just simply cancel it. So I immediately know that R is never allowed to be zero. But if I just cancel it, what does this become? That's a quadratic. I can solve that for R. 
that's r squared minus r minus 1 equals 0. How do you solve quadratic equations? If you can't factor it, what do you move on to? Quadratic formula. But quadratic formula actually used what? Completing the square to make a perfect square trinomial and extracting the square root for ax squared plus bx plus c. But once you've done it, you can just jump straight to the answer. What's r? It's equal to negative b, so 1, plus and minus the square root. b squared, 1, minus 4 times a times c, which means plus 4, all over 2 times a, which is 2. And so this is 1 plus or minus radical 5 all over 2. So I have two solutions. It's going to be 1 plus radical 5 over 2 and 1 minus radical 5 all over 2. So that means that I have two solutions. What are my solutions? 1 plus radical 5 all over 2 to the nth and 1 minus radical 5 all over 2 to the nth would both work on that a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2. But then how do you put two unique solutions together? You put them together by linear combination. And so that would tell us that I'm just going to put them both together. So my a sub n is going to be equal to a constant. They call it, let's call it constant 1 times 1 plus radical 5 all over 2 to the nth power plus constant 2, 1 minus radical 5 all over 2 to the nth power. And this is the solution to a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2. What I don't know, though, but if I would say things like, hey, look, a0 is 0 and a1 is 1, if I know this, if I have initial values, then if I have two initial values, I should be able to find those two constants. And I can find a specific generator, because the recurrence relation obviously would have a bunch of solutions, because it's the basis that kicks out a specific function. But once I give you the basis, I should be able to find my specific function. All right, so if I plug in a0 equals 0, what would that look like? That means I plug in 0 for n. What's anything to the 0 power? 1. So that means that a0, which happens to be what? 0, is equal to c1 plus c2. Plug in the, this guy here. It would be 1 is equal to plug a 1 in for each of those. That would be c1 times 1 plus radical 5 all over 2 plus c2 times 1 minus radical 5 all over 2. And that becomes that equation. Can you solve that? Boy, we're really kicking in some old school stuff. How about systems of equations? How do you solve systems of equations? Substitution. Elimination. This one's not too bad. From just looking at that, C1 is minus C2. Or if I did it the other way, this might get that way. C2 is minus C1. What does that mean that is? That means that this, this guy here becomes 1 is equal to C1 times 1 plus radical 5 all over 2 minus C1, 1 minus radical 5 all over 2. Let's use substitution. Solve for one of the variables, plug it into the other system. Um, I don't like the two, I don't like fractions, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the halves and then just put it on the other side. And then this times this, and then this times this. The C1 times 1 is C1, negative C1 times 1 is negative C1, so those go away. So 2 is equal to, this would be square root of 5 C1, and that would be minus a minus is a plus square root of 5 C1. So how many square roots of 5 do I have on the right? I have two of them, so I can move them across, and it's canceled with that two. So what's C1? 1 over radical 5. But what does that make C2? Minus 1 over radical 5. And you sit there and look at this. Okay, so what have I just found? The 
Fibonacci numbers have a closed form function of 1 over radical 5 times 1 plus radical 5 over 2 to the nth power minus a 1 over radical 5 times a 1 minus radical 5 all over 2 to the nth power. Does anybody recognize 1 plus radical 5 over 2? Historically. It's called the golden ratio. And the other one is the reciprocal of it. And it ends up being that the Fibonacci numbers are generated by the golden ratio as a base of an exponential equation. So if I wanted to find the one millionth Fibonacci number, what would you need to do to use the recursive form. Make all of them. If you wanted to find the one millionth Fibonacci number for the bottom one, what would you do? Plug in a million. But actually, if you ever do any programming, um, you can simplify this a little bit. All right, radical five is about what? What's the for? Two, so it's a bit bigger than two, right? So 1 minus radical 5 would be about 1 minus 2, which is about negative 1-ish. What's a negative 1 divided by 2? It's about a negative half. So this thing is about minus 1 half, right? It's about a minus 0.5. If you raise that to a really big power, where does that go? It goes to 0. So if you want to use this, don't use the second part. Just use this part in round. Because it's going to be close to an int. What does the second part do? Move it on to an int. I have a better function, round. Round just simply gets says, go to the closest int. And the closest int is going to be the Fibonacci number. So if you wanted to program this, you wouldn't even worry about the second one, because the second one is going to zero anyways. It's eventually doing plus minus incredibly tiny numbers. Just round it. So if you just simply round that, so if you ever coded this, you would just simply add this, round that, and we're done. So you only have to do one of these things. It's kind of interesting, though, if you look at this. This is the golden ratio to an nth power divided by radical 5 becomes, and then another one, if we ignore the rounding part of all this stuff, does this seem almost crazy? The golden ratio is purely irrational. Radical 5 is purely irrational. A purely irrational number to an nth power multiplied divided by an irrational minus the same thing going on becomes an integer. And the integer is a Fibonacci number. <laughs>